coming to the different type of control of speed that is flux control or field control where uh, according to formula we have studied that torque generally proportional to phi into i a or which I can say that it is here also torque is phi i a so if I am able to manage my flux phi I will be able to manage my torque here and by torque I will be able to manage my speed so another in this another way we will be discussing the flux control in a short while also now before that we will be saying a type of excitations of the machine uh, of the DC motor actually and DC motors also have that uh, excitation based on the how the field windings are excited in DC generator we have seen the different type of excitation one was the permanent DC magnet type of excitation where the, uh, the magnets two magnets were placed over there and the constant flux was there another type was separately excited where the rather than using the permanent magnets we use the electromagnets and we made electromagnets uh, by a separate uh, DC source uh, and after that we uh, have seen the uh, series motors uh, which is coming series motor and shunt motor which are under uh, self excitation that when the excitation is by the uh, itself on itself uh, generated EV then it is called the self excited motors after that we have seen the compound types of excitation also the cumulative compound and differential compound here also cumulative, cumulative compound uh, motors are there differential compound motors are there so the excitation is almost the same uh, is exactly the same in fact uh, as we have studied in DC generators now coming to separately excited so for uh, just for to understand how uh, motor looks so we have a EA over here which is the uh, input voltage given to the uh, machine or the motor actually and then uh, I have other uh, RA which is equals to the armature resistance and the current flowing is the IA and EB is generated so there is a shaft which is connected to other load and I will be getting a top over here these are the brushes and EV is generated in the same way and it is opposing actually the uh, cost which is the EA and for the separately excited machines I have a field winding uh, which is having uh, the RF which is called field uh, resistance and the field current IF and flux is made by a separately excited source so uh, if my RF is constant and E is constant then I will be getting a pi as constant P. So the regulation of the separately excited motor is very good. Uh, it means that voltage, uh, I'm talking about the uh, speed regulation actually. Speed regulation is very good in the sense that the regulation is the change in speed from no load to full load. So since the flux is constant, almost constant here. so the speed regulation is very good and uh, coming to the shunt motor part then if the shunt motors if they are self excited means rather than using this E here my motor will be connected to the same internal uh, internally connected self excited so this everything would be same but the only difference will be that since now motor is excited by itself only and it is called a self excited motor and here since this is connected in parallel my shunt winding is connected into parallel so this is called a shunt motor and here also we can see that the pi is practically constant because RF is constant and uh, the current through it is very uh, small uh, the current, there are two currents, one is IA, uh, IA is very much greater than IF, so IF is that much only uh, to provide sufficient uh, flux to the machine so that the machine rotates, uh, 
in the same so the flux is almost constant so it's a constant uh, flux machine so according to formula torque is equal to phi into i a since the torque uh, my phi is constant so i can say that the torque is directly proportional to the current in shunt motors and i am talking about the shunt motor torque is directly proportional to phi i a but the phi is practically constant so i can say the torque is directly proportional to the current so when i talk, see the torque current characteristics of a um, dc shunt motor it will be a straight line now coming to the top speed characteristics so the uh, other thing going into top speed characteristic we first of all understand the uh, two concept and it's the top constant torque machine and the constant power uh, machine so shunt motors are practically uh, considered as constant torque drives so when we know the formula p is equals to p into omega when this torque is constant this torque is constant so my p which is a power is directly proportional to the omega that is the speed so i'll be getting a torque speed curve as almost a straight line which is tapered due to saturation uh, but it is almost practically constant so rather than doing it like this i can have uh, uh, lesser slope so torque speed curve of the constant torque drives are like this but when i consider it as a constant power drive so when the power is constant but of this the torque will be inversely proportional to the speed so at that time i will be getting my torque speed curve as like this so this is to be remembered that when i am having this thing constant power drive i will be getting a uh, parabolic path this type of path and when my my torque is constant i will be getting this type of this type of graph so this is this is very important regarding uh, when i am talking about constant power drive and constant torque drive now coming to another part which is called a the power is not constant again if i drawing torque versus omega when the when the torque is constant when the power is not constant at that time i'll be getting a constant torque i'll be getting a constant torque up to certain point where i reached the torque generator is now rated one my current i a is also rated one my speed is also a rated one uh, at this point everything is rated one so constant torque drives this is my constant torque drives so constant torque drives always have torque constant in the reason in this reason in this reason my power is fluctuating so i'll be getting a power like this and after this constant torque drive if i want to <coughs> increase the speed of my machine i need to have the flux control method in the flux control method i start decreasing my flux and my speed will go on increasing that will decrease my flux in this region where it is a constant power here my power is constant so this is called as the flux control region and this is called the armature control region 
So in the armature control region, torque is constant, but my power is variable. In the constant power region, my torque is fluctuating or torque is variable, my power is constant. The constant torque drives are normally done by armature controls and the constant power drives are done by flux controls. <coughs> this is very important regarding constant power drive and constant power drives. So now coming back to uh, the original shunt and series motors. Now we will be discussing about the series motors. We have seen the shunt motor that in the shunt motor that free current is in the free uh, field is in uh, uh, parallel to the uh, series, uh, parallel to the machine actually. Uh, so it is called the shunt motor. Now coming to series machines, when the machine is connected <coughs> in series, we will see how If my field coil is connected in series with the machine, then it is called as the series excited DC uh, motor, where I can see that the current which is coming from here, 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 now the direction of the current has become this way, this way, this way, and this way. So every, the current is in series. So the current IF and IA are set. It means IA is equal to IF. Another thing, by looking at this formula, I can say that uh, torque is directly proportional to phi IA. So this is universal uh, truth for all the machines in DC uh, machines. Torque is directly proportional to phi IA. And since this phi is dependent upon IF, phi is dependent on IF. So I can replace IF by phi by IF and IF by IA. So I can have another IS here. So it means that torque is directly proportional to IA square. In DC series motor, torque is directly proportional to the square of the arbitrary current. So when I see the uh, torque current characteristics of a DC series motor, I'll get A graph somewhat like this and this. This is the reason up to this point, this is the reason which is where the torque is directly proportional to I square. After some time, when my current is this is torque, this is current characteristics of DC series motor. So this is the reason. This is the reason where my torque is directly proportional to the I square. But after some time, after the saturation of my field, torque becomes directly proportional to IA at the higher reason because of the saturation of the field. This is the torque uh, current characteristics of series motor. Now coming to the torque, speed torque characteristics, <coughs> speed torque characteristics of the DC series motor. Since DC series motor has already stated that they are treated as a constant power drive. So again, uh, I'll write that formula. Power is equal to Tj into omega. Since the power is constant, then the torque is inversely proportional to the speed. So if I see the graph of the torque versus speed, then the torque versus the speed graph of DC series motor I will see a graph somewhat like this, which is the inversely proportional to the speed. So I will be getting speed like this for speed characteristic. Coming to the speed current characteristics, in the uh, IA current, IA is inversely proportional to the uh, see, IA is inversely proportional to 1 by omega under root. 
since torque is directly proportional torque is inversely proportional to ia uh, torque is uh, sorry directly inversely proportional to the uh, speed and uh, current is directly proportional to torque so the current will be inversely proportional to, to the square of speed so i'll be getting current versus speed characteristics like the same way the torque versus speed uh, term is there so these three curves are there one is called the torque current characteristics which is like of somewhat like this this is the reason where torque is directly proportional to i a square here torque is proportional to i a these three graphs are very important in the series motor also we have studied the same you know, three graphs in the shunt motor also and we will be seeing now seeing the compound motors <sighs> Uh, according to based on these uh, the characteristics of the uh, uh, these characteristics the application of the machine is decided uh, uh, since the, it is having a high starting torque and at very low speed and at very high speed uh, very low uh, torque is there so uh, dc series motor are using where the very high starting torque is uh, required, like in cranes, like in elevators, like in tractions. Uh, these are the very good example of DC series motor where uh, fairly good speed is required and uh, very uh, large starting uh, load current uh, load is very much high. At that time, the torque should be very high and the speed at the speed is very low. And as the speed increases at that point. My uh, requirement of the torque would be very much less. So, uh, fractions is a very good example of for DC series motor. Uh, Whereas the shank, for the shank motor, where practically constant speed is required, like in slates, like in uh, uh, your drills and all that, where the practically constant speed is required. So, uh, in, in DC shank motor, have the application over there. Uh, we will be seeing the uh, Component citation. We'll see the component excitation. Okay, before that, we'll see uh, the difference between exactly the difference between the uh, series motor and the shunt motor. I have two things. One is your uh, one is your series. All right, right. series over here. Uh, we discuss shunt first. So we will be starting with the shunt. <coughs> then the series one. First one was uh, shunt excitement, another is the series excitement. So, when the shunt torque is directly proportional to pi i a, uh, but flux is constant, so I omit torque is directly proportional to i, and here torque is directly proportional to the square of current. Here, yeah. since if I say that if the resistance R A becomes zero, what will happen? If the resistance R A becomes zero, we know the formula that is uh, uh, V T is equal to E B plus I A R A. So E B if R A becomes zero, then your vacuum F will be equal to E A. And this Ea is equals to actually your uh, so, sorry Eb is exactly equal to k phi omega. This Ea is constant. Flux is also constant. So at that time the speed will be very much high. So when my flux is uh, zero when 
I decrease the flux of my machine. Uh, so at no load, this runaway condition would be occur, and runaway will be such that my phi is equal to zero. If my phi is zero, but of course my speed will be values high. Now, whereas in when if the series resistance is zero here. And we know that E B is equal to K phi omega, which is uh, phi is directly proportional to I A. So I A omega is now. So E B is directly proportional to I A omega because phi is directly proportional to I F and I F is equal to I A. So I can write I A into omega. If now at the starting and I A is zero, then at that point E B is also zero. Therefore, omega is omega, which is the speed, is very high at that point because if this is zero, this should be infinity to balance this equation. So, if the applied voltage is is at no load, at omega is equal to zero, which is the speed is very low, and your uh, E B is also zero. At that point, torque is directly proportional to I square. We know that. So uh, at that point, uh, uh, I is also uh, responsible for uh, your phi. So speed will be quickly built up, and it will be at uh, the very high speed will be attained by the uh, my series motor. So the runaway condition here would be uh, when no load. At startup, <coughs> here the runaway condition is that when the flux is zero. <coughs> now coming to another point, which is called the compound machines. Uh, compound machines. In the compound machine, there are two types of compound. We have seen that one is cumulative compound, another is called the differential compound. In the cumulative compound, we have seen that the phi series is adding to phi shunt. Here, the phi series is adding to phi shunt, whereas here the phi shunt is actually phi opposing the phi series. So, when I talk about the Cumulative compound type of motors. Uh, we have seen one runaway condition when phi was zero in uh, shunt motor, and when the uh, when there was no load uh, and the startup, then the uh, machine uh, series machine will be uh, uh, runaway, will be in a runaway condition. So both the, these things are taken care of by uh, the uh, your cumulative compound machine. In which uh, at the start of uh, omega is equal to zero, uh, but obvious and uh, EV is so EV is equal to zero, so um, IA is equal to zero. At the start of what happens that IF of the phi shunt will be there because uh, it it waves at the starting it waves at the shunt motor under no load and when it it comes picks up the load it becomes as the load increases, it becomes a uh, your it waves like a series motor. <coughs> so practically, um, the cumulative compound motors are used in uh, punches, spears, and uh, uh, drills also somewhere. Somewhere, uh, it's not drills actually; it's uh, reciprocating pumps. In, uh, yeah. Common example of respiratory pumps and uh, the presses also, shears also. Cumulative compound. Practically, differential compound motors doesn't have any application because when the phi shunt is uh, uh, when phi shunt is going down, then it will be having a very high speed, and the speed will be very much high. 
on the uh, when it is uh, no loading. As the load increases, the speed decreases in the uh, carbonated compound motors. And in the differential compound motor, as the load increases, the speed also increases. So that is not required. So practically, this doesn't have any practical application.